Good morning. Welcome to the Grand Ledge Baptist Church Connections for June 1st. Uh, this morning as I film this, uh, it's really a, a hard time. It comes after a difficult weekend in the life of our nation. And I want you to know we picked these psalms that, that we talk about far, far in advance. And this particular psalm was one I picked very intentionally, but uh, I didn't have it intended necessarily for uh, something as dramatic as what we've seen over the last couple of days in our nation's history. Uh, but even this morning as I read it and reread it, I'm convinced that the Lord uh, put it here for a reason at this time. And uh, I know as we think about the death of George Floyd and the uh, riots and demonstrations and tensions in our nation today that uh, it's a, just a very difficult time and a lot has been said about it. I don't really want to add anything uh, about the events themselves. Uh, enough has been said and ink has been spilled. I'm not sure I have anything particularly new to add. Nonetheless, this morning I do think it highlights that we live in an in-between time, a time when God's kingdom has come, uh, but also a time when it's not yet here in its fullness. And because of that, because we live in that broken world, in a world that uh, really doesn't look the way that God wants it to in its entirety, uh, we have these sorts of moments. And as a church, both as a local church, Grand Ledge Baptist, and as a worldwide church, I sometimes think, at least maybe I should say here in North America, we have lost the language of lament. And the psalm that I chose to talk about this morning is a psalm of lament. It's Psalm 13. Psalm 13 is a difficult psalm. It's a psalm uh, that cries out to God. And in fact, I think we've lost that language, but the psalms themselves, uh, the, the most common type of psalm is in fact lament. And Jesus himself used laments. Um, his words on the cross, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, uh, came directly from a psalm of lament. I heard once that perhaps Jesus quoted the entire thing as he uh, was hung on the, on the cross. Uh, I, I rather suspect that's actually true, that that's what he did although we don't know. And my point to all that is laments were common to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They've been common throughout the church's history. They've been commonly understood as our way of crying out to God and crying back to Him. And certainly at this moment in the life of our nation and our church, we have that desire and that drive to cry out to God. That It's getting expressed in a lot of different ways. Uh, even even now, as I look at my social media feeds, that uh, expression uh, so often is coming out inappropriately and unwisely, uh, sometimes with uh, uh, unrighteous anger, sometimes with righteous anger. Uh, but I, my point to that is, I think because we have lost the language of lament, uh, we maybe don't know how to talk back to God in ways that are appropriate to our day and time. And Psalm 13, in six short verses, gives us a helpful way to talk about um, and cry out to God. Uh, and so uh, Psalm 13, I want to read it in the first person plural. Uh, the Psalms, I think, are meant to be used to give us language, meant to be uh, put into our own times and our own places. And so as I read it with just a few comments, um, I want us to read it as a prayer to God in difficult times uh, in the life of our nation and our church. How long, Lord, will you forget us forever? How long will you hide your face from us? How long must we wrestle with our thoughts? and day after day have sorrow in our hearts. And how long will our enemies triumph over us? Look on us and answer us, Lord our God. Give light to our eyes, lest we sleep in death. And our enemy will then say, I have overcome them, and our foes will rejoice when we fall. This is a way of crying out to God, and the psalmist says, How long are you going to let things go like this, Father? How long will this go on? And even on the other side of the cross, as we live in the already not yet of the kingdom of God, we feel that tension. We ask God, How long will this go on? How, how much longer do we have to live with this? And the psalmist, interestingly, doesn't answer the question. The answer is left unsaid, but the answer would be clear to anybody who has a deep appreciation and understanding of Scripture. 
How long will it go on? Only for as long as God wants it to. He is still sovereign. He is still in control. And thus the psalmist can end with these words. But we trust in your unfailing love. Our heart rejoices in your salvation. We will sing the Lord's praise, for he has been good to us. Even in the midst of heartache and heartbreak, the psalmist has an immense sense and feeling of trust in God. And why does he have that? He has that because he knows that the Lord will someday answer that prayer. That even as the psalmist says, how long will this go on? Uh, the psalmist knows it will not go on forever. That God will in fact fix it. And so we use the lament language to cry out to God. And I encourage you this morning um, with your cares and today and this week uh, with your cares and the difficulties of what we see in the world around us to use the lament psalms, particularly Psalm 13, to cry out to God, to give our cares to him. Uh, that's what they're here for. Uh, let's not lose the language of lament, um, but let's use it to pray appropriate prayers to our God and to Jesus Christ.